This is five on your side at six, focused on you. Two students get caught having sex in a classroom at Hazelwood Central High School. Tonight, police say it happened while other students and a teacher were in the same room. Thank you for being with us tonight. I'm Ann Allred. This happened yesterday morning. Police say charges are on the way. Our Justina Cornell learned more about it and joins us in studio. Justina. Yeah, and so St. Louis County Police tell me while there weren't any arrests yesterday, they are, are asking the prosecutor to charge the two. Beyond that, more charges could be coming. Some, some video footage is circulating social media. There were two teenage children that appeared to be having sex in the middle of a classroom. It's a scandal that shocked Anya Carpenter. Her alma mater, Hazelwood Central, is also home for her two kids. Both will go to Central. One is a senior, which is 18. The other one is 15. Thursday morning, her daughter notified her a video was circulating. Through social media, I learned that there was actually more videos and pictures. St. Louis County Police say two students were having sex in a classroom, as other students and a faculty member were in the same classroom at the same time of the incident. Police asked prosecutors to charge the 18-year-old with first-degree sexual misconduct, and they referred the 17-year-old boy to St. Louis County Family Court on the same charge. My biggest concern is just not to be notified. From my understanding, there's an investigation about if the teacher was actually asleep in the class. And so I understand wanting to get the information before bringing it out to the public. But as a parent, I do think it should have at least been a conversation or a phone call email just addressing the parents about the situation to make us aware. Being aware is something A.B. Robbins wants parents and students to be, especially when this case involves a minor. In Missouri, it is illegal to both film or manufacture, possess or distribute child pornography. Charges and penalties can range anywhere from 30 years of incarceration um, and almost all of the charges are felonies. We have victims who are in their 50s, 60s, well into adulthood, who are still being notified that their images as a child are being shared. Both women want kids to be cautious. I don't think the children now understand the consequences of their behavior. And they're not understanding the repercussions. It's up to us as advocates, it's up to us as parents and community partners to make sure that kids understand the dangers of possessing or manufacturing this material. Now, we did reach out to the Hazelwood School District several times. We wanted to know how a teacher could allow this to happen. The school told us they do not have a comment. Today, 7,000 more workers joined the nationwide UAW strike. They are from a Ford plant in Chicago and a GM plant in Lansing, Michigan. Five on your side, Tracy Hinson has reaction from local 2250 in Wentzville, where workers have been striking for weeks. I think the UAW's platform and our resolve is as strong as it's going to be. Um, the members are steadfast for a good contract. A contract that includes a significant raise for UAW members. Car prices have gone up immensely. General Motors, Ford and Solantis have made $250 billion in profits just in the last decade, and they've already made more than $20 billion this year. They have the money. UAW President Sean Fain said negotiations have progressed with Solantis, but have stalled with Ford and GM. Despite our willingness to bargain, Ford and GM have refused to make meaningful progress at the table. In response, a GM executive told employees that the company is still waiting on a comprehensive counteroffer from the union. The GM offer in question was from September 21st. Ford CEO told the press that his company and the UAW are very close to a deal. However, he says they remain stuck on contract terms for the workers at several electric vehicle battery factories being built by Ford. I think Ford has withdrawn a little bit on some of their negotiations. So General Motors and Ford have been affected by the walkout this week. While it didn't happen here on this picket line, the presidential visit did boost morale across UAW picket lines nationwide. When you have the president of the United States on your side, he's the most powerful man in the world, and he comes out and he says that he knows that the big three can afford it. He knows that we deserve it and he's on our side. That's big. That's really big. In Wentzville, Tracy Henson, five on your side. Tonight, the GM chair and CEO released a statement about the expanded strike. It reads in part, they've demanded a record contract, and that's exactly what we've offered for weeks now. A historic contract with record wage increases, record job security, and world-class health care. 
A teacher in Franklin County who created an OnlyFans account to supplement her income has been placed on leave. The website's one of the most popular adult video platforms in the world. Brianna Kopage teaches at St. Clair High School, and she says she chose the site because it's subscription only, and she thought it would protect her identity. She says no content was filmed or posted while she was on school grounds. Her access to school email and other software is suspended while the district investigates. As a homeless encampment continues to grow outside of St. Louis City Hall, there are new calls for city leaders to take action. Five on your side's Holden Kerwicki spoke with members of the Board of Aldermen today, and he joins us live downtown. Holden. Well, and there are roughly 1,500 people that are homeless in the city of St. Louis at any given time. While city leaders continue to look at ways to get them all help, I went over and spoke to members who are camping outside of City Hall about the message that they're trying to send to city leaders. As the homeless camp outside City Hall continues to grow. It's just mind boggling that it's like at the front door of City Hall. DeAndre Commons admits it's become an all too common sight in the city of St. Louis. In any encampment, the mood is down um, because the unhoused population already feel like a forgotten population and then to be posted up outside in the city, it's just it's just ridiculous. He spent the last 15 years in camps like this trying to provide medical help to people in need like Sharice Anita Jackson. I didn't choose to be out here. She's been living on the streets for the past several months and chose to stay outside of City Hall to send a message. It was because of basically liars and thieves and the biggest crooks are the politicians, the money. It's it's not being used for what it should be. The St. Louis Board of Aldermen is looking at ways to provide solutions to homelessness, but legislation is at least a week away from being introduced. That would uh, create a homeless bill of rights and also a zoning change to make it easier to open shelters in the city. They've given out tents, but still that doesn't fix the problem. You're still out here. One of the challenges we have at the moment is there is not enough appropriate shelter space. In the short term, the city is going to continue to rely on professional help from people like Commons. And I don't know what the outcome of this is going to be. I pray for the best, uh, but prepare for the worst. But until a fix is in place, Anita Jackson says she's going going to stay outside of City Hall to send a message. And these people aren't the problem. The problem is they don't have anywhere to go. So what are you going to do? Legi New legislation is expected to be introduced by the Board of Aldermen next week that could provide some flexibility for the city to provide additional resources to the homeless. A city spokesman actually texted me a few minutes ago and told me that this local shelters are at 82% capacity at this time. Reporting live in downtown St. Louis, Holden Kerwicki, five on your side. A live look at Bush Stadium where a three day celebration of Cardinals ace Adam Wainwright is about to begin. The Cardinals are wrapping up the season with a homestand against the Cincinnati Reds. Tomorrow, Wayno will perform three new songs after the game. And then on Sunday, there's a pregame retirement ceremony. The first 25,000 fans, 16 and older, will take home a Wayno themed guitar.